You may have heard the news that Gironda and Bordeaux are going into an administrational phase. They have to be relegated because they are bankrupt, simply put. And so today, I become the manager of Gironda and Bordeaux to take them back to old glory days because I cannot accept the fact that a team that had legends like Lisa Razou, Zinedine Zidane will be, of course, not in FC25 and won't even be a professional team anymore. Let's not forget that, guys. So our task today is to take over this fairly average Girondin Bordeaux side. But there are a couple of twists. First off, we are only allowed to sign free agents because actually Bordeaux don't have any money and so we have to follow that route. But also, and maybe even more importantly, to really clear the club from depth in the upcoming seasons, we have a five-season plan where we have to generate 20 million in total over those five seasons. We can either generate like 10 million in the first season and then only 10 million in the four seasons after that, or just generate 2 million, for example, in the first couple of seasons, but then generate like 18 million in the last three. We will not even be allowed as a non-professional football club to hire scouts because the whole Gironda Academy has been closed as well. For the style of play, I'm not really sure what I should use here in the first season, but I will opt for a counter-attacking more kind of safe way with this Bordeaux site. We have already made two sales in Vital Zimba for 1.85 million, as well as backup goalkeeper Rafal Stracek, for 1.7 to Paris FC. So we have made 3.55 million so far. We have quite a few talents like Betfian, who I'm going to give the starting spot over Johnson and Swiderski here. We have Ekomier who is only 19 at left back, so quite a few talents actually here. I also give the starting spot to De Amori. We really try to get the youth going in this rebuild, so Diaz are also in the starting 11, as well as Weissbeck. And then Illy's up front, he's 27, 72, maybe the best rated player in this whole team. Maybe Marco Piacca is someone who would join us here. On our quest to make Bordeaux once again a big club. I am searching through the free agency list, I've also found Israel Reyes, so both of these guys are very interesting. Then you have a player like Marcel Ruiz, of course, also Mexican. But I'm gonna make it a rule that I can only sign one player per window, per nationality. So not two Mexicans in one window. Next window, yes, but... Another rule that I haven't told you about is, of course, the classical rule that we only have three transfers per season. So we cannot sign all these free agents here. Eric Sanchez also seems like a super interesting free agent. I think I've used him before, but I'm not so sure. He's also Mexican. So let me think who I can use here from, of course, this free agency list. Let me introduce you to our first signing with Bordeaux. A free agent, of course. I'm not going to repeat that every single time. It is the Croatian Marco Piaka joining us. What really, really interests me is his overall, and it's a 74. So he's an upgrade on Livolo, De Lima, everyone we have on those winger positions. Our second signing coming into the club, our only, first and only Mexican for, of course, this window. We had, of course, a very, very big Mexican choice, but I went in for Israel Reyes, the centre-back. He will be also about a 74 overall, a new star player at centre-back. Piazza, of course, into the team. I don't, I think it's Piazza or Piaka. 28-73. And we had a little issue at centre-back. But not anymore, as we've brought in Israel Reyes, 23-74, a lot of room to grow still. And I think with those two transfers, our transfer window can get wrapped up for season number one. We have generated a further 4.28 million by selling P2 to Grenoble. Big, big sale, 3.3 million. And a player I'm just going to call Emerick because of obvious reasons. He goes to Rodas AF for 980k, so as I said, 4.28 million added, of course, onto our generate code. 
in total we have generated 7.7 .7 million so far by selling of course four players which means of course that we only have to generate about 12.3 million if my maths are correct the first season with bordeaux in the second french division is over and we've been promoted automatically i mean just two points behind first placed estac troyer who we just rebuilt about like a week or two ago but we are promoted and that's a real real surprise i didn't expect that from our squad we even made it to the round of 16 of the coupe nationale before getting knocked out away to Lyon. albert ellis our striker has gone up by one the man from honduras and he scored 14 goals our new man piaka has scored 11 and then what is this israel reyes the center back 10 goals eight assists those are i don't know strikers numbers but yeah better than Vipotnik who's also scored 10 up by 3 Davidashvili one of the Georgian superstars he has gone up by 4 as well those two transfers in Reyes 23 77 and of course Piaka who hasn't gone up but still 74 overall have really helped us Amorim has also gone up by 3 or 4 we have Diaz here the 25 year old 74 rated he might be a player full of of course, also the future. Barbe might get replaced if we find a better free agent. At the end of the first season, we have been promoted, of course, to Liga. Very surprisingly. And we've also already generated 7.7 .7 million. So there is about 12.3 still to generate in the upcoming four seasons. That's about 3 million per season. At the start of the second season, some players returned from loan. All of those you can see here on the bottom, so that gives us a little bit of hope to, of course, make a further clear out. Considering the start 11, we have to see maybe, as I said, uh, Borbe here on the chopping blocks. So is Weiss back, so a better centre back, a better centre midfielder would be on the cards. Lads, we are about to make a crazy signing here. A Serbian striker, you can already read his name on the left, of course it's going to be... Luka Jovic, if we get the wages right. I don't know what to offer him, to be honest. I'm gonna give him 50k, which he accepts, and that's our first big signing here with Girondin Bordeaux. Here he is, Luka Jovic, joining us from the free agency list. I couldn't believe my luck when I saw this guy popping up on that list. The second player we sign is a new centre-back, as I announced already. We needed a new centre back to of course replace the captain and I think I found the right player. It is Lloyd Kelly, the I think in real life Bournemouth player joining us again here from the free agency list. A final signing we make is of course another centre forward, another player who I think I can easily convert to either a cam or a winger. His name is Quinn Yones, he's a Colombian. We had to do really quickly because this guy was already approached by Inter Milan of all teams and for a good reason, he's 77 overall. I switched up to the formation to two strikers with David Ashvili at the left wing spot, Piaka at the right wing spot so we can get the best out of these teams, the highest re rated players into the starting 11. I have very very good news guys as in the second season we have generated enough cash already, I wouldn't have expected that. But with, by selling Vipotnik to Besiktas for 4 million, Sissoko for 3.3 to Southampton, Delorie Chaube who returned from loan for 3.2 to Oviedo, Weisbeck, of course, one of the starters, but he was sold to Genoa. We had to make, of course, some tough decisions as well. 2.5 million for Tebili, a third or fourth string striker to Turkey, and then Michelin to Celtic for 2.4, Paji to Independiente for 2.2. Kasubie to Luton, De Lima to Cardiff 2.2 and 2.1 and then Ruyar of course to Charlton Athletic a third string goalkeeper. With all of that said and done we have generated 22.6 million alone in season number two with of course the 7.7 .7 million from the first season which makes it over 30 million that we have generated. It's now down to all of those guys I mean the squad is quite depleted it's very very thin. We don't have a lot of options from the bench, but it's all on those guys, especially those from the starting 11. 
I have converted Julian Quinones to a striker from a center forward, and he stays at a 79. Nonetheless, he will go up in about eight seasons. Season the league is done, and we are in 12th spot, so far away from the relegation zone. Nine points, to be very clear. Nine wins, 11 draws, 14 losses. Still a lot of work to do. Behind the likes of Mets and non, but... Yeah, PSG once again, the champions in flying colors. I'm really, really happy with that finish. PSG do the double over Monaco, and we have been absolutely crushed by Montpellier in the round of 32 of the Coupe Nationale. Those stats are looking ab absolutely shocking. Queen Younes with six goals and Davidashvili alongside Elis, the top scorers. Jovi Jodli with five goals, that's really disappointing. Diaz, five goals, seven assists, not bad. But yeah... I'm a bit concerned about the growth here. And maybe because most of the players are really, really in a bad mood. I don't know why they are, because actually we made, we, we kept ourselves up very, very comfortably. So they shouldn't be in that kind of a mood. David Ashvili up to 77 is great. He has 75. Kinyunez and Jovic still had an 80. I mean, the marksmen of this side, but they didn't really deliver, especially Jovic. As you can see, the manager rating is also not great, even though we finished 12. So yeah, the board expects a lot of us. You guys will not believe who I found on the free agency list here at the beginning of the third season. I mean, it's just unbelievable our luck here, in this case. The most expensive goalkeeper of all time in real life, Kepa, joins us here at Bordeaux for zero euros. Our second signing is a CDM. Last season, of course, we couldn't snatch one. So that's why we go in for a young, talented, exciting prospect. It is Dario S. Hugo. In real life, I do believe he plays for Sporting Lisbon. Another big signing, third and final one for season number three. A right back, new right back. 22 years of age. Mattia Zanotti. To Bordeaux here, a right back. He's a 76 rated right back, so an upgrade on Bokele. Piumla has been sold to Famalica for 1.5 million. Livolo to Besiktas, a default starting player of Bordeaux. We still got 3 million out of him. And then Swiderski, only the third string goalkeeper anymore. 2.3 million to AZ Alkmaar in the Netherlands. With both Kepa, 30-82 and Zanotti, 22-76 into the side. This is, of course, looking much better. As Hugo gives us backup at the CDM spot on the bench. Ignatenko now goes to the reserves. He's the only one left. We only have 19 players in the squad, so very thin. We of course don't have you. At the end of the third season, once again, we are about the same spot than last season. A bit higher, to be honest. In ninth spot, PSG the champion, 72 points, but we still cannot get a lot further. We are now in the top half of the table. That is a good thing. The French Cup once again goes to PSG as well over Marseille, 4-1 in the final. While we've been knocked out in round of 32 already, so in our first round of competition, Montpellier knocked us out. And I mean, Julien Vetro, I didn't even know that this guy existed. 10 goals for us from the bench, mostly. Queen Jones with 8, Jovic only with 6. I mean, the stats are still not looking great because centre-back Reyes, our captain, has scored 5 goals. 5 goals for Piaka, 5 goals and 3 assists for David Ashville, who has gone up by 3 to an 80 overall. That's a good growth. As you can see, I mean, Vetro is only on the bench. He's 3 lower rated than Piaka. And still delivers the best numbers of all of this team here. Our defense is looking nice with Reyes especially at the center back. With Kelly. Ecomier 22-77. We have Laku in midfield. CDM 24-76. I mean we might just need to do something in that midfield for next season. I mean don't get me wrong guys. We still have played a very very good season. Ninth spot in Liga is exactly where I hoped we would be after three seasons. Would have not expected that... Not to be involved in a relegation scrap in those two seasons we were in league uh, is really good. And I hope it continues upwards our trend, of course. Our first signing of the season, of season number four, is a very, very big one. An Italian right winger, exactly where we needed improvements. In real life, he's a national team player. Here he comes to Gironda and Bordeaux. It is Domenico Berardi, the Sassuolo player here, coming in from the free agency list, of course. Next up, it is a new central midfielder slash CDM joining our club. Of course, a position 
where furthermore we were really, really weak. The incoming player is Michael Abisha, Abisha, however you say his name, he's a Swiss international. Last but not least, we go in for a new left back, a man who can, of course, compete with our starting left back, if not overtake him completely, immediately. The Spanish left back, Alex Moreno, joining us. I mean, just look at the quality of this team now. We've really, really improved it, especially here at the left back spot, at the right wing spot, and then, of course, at the CDM spot. We were able to make that transfer out as well in Albert Elise, the Honduras player, the Honduras striker. He goes to Braga for 6.1 At the end of season 4, we are only in ninth spot. Spec bang mid table. 11 wins, 11 draws, 12 losses. I don't like that, lads. PSG, as per usual, the champions. Will that ever change? I don't think so. But yeah, once again, no European football. We are a bit stagnating. That's the least you can say here. Reds are looking better, I'm not gonna lie. Quinones with 13, Berardi with 12. He's gone down by 2, though. Jovic with 9 goals. But then there is a big drop-off. David Ashvili with 5, Vetro with 4. Yeah. This team, actually, I mean, the front line is looking very good. The goalkeeper is very good. The back line isn't looking bad either. The only thing I'm a bit concerned about is the midfield. Diaz, Laku, Esugo will, of course, improve still. He's only 22, but the others are already 29 and 25. So we might need to see what we can do there. I mean, that's a bit like the problem here. Now to really improve that team and really bring them into those top four, top three positions. That's going to be the next target. Hopefully in season five, we can make a step towards that target. To start off season number five, we go in for a regen center forward. He's from Croatia, only 18 years of age. We need more goals in this team. And that's why I've brought in Cedomir Jankovic, a center forward, as I said. Second, to be able to make that next step towards, of course, European competitions, if possible. We've gone in for an Inter player in real life. He's only 25. The Frenchman, Lucia Agumé, joining us. And last but not least, to strengthen that back line. We leaked a few goals too many, so that's why we go in for a 19-year-old, another regen. By the name of Flavio Ferreira joining us here at Bordeaux, of course. With, of course, Ferreira, he goes to the starting 11. He's as high rated as Kelly, but nine years younger. Get out Diaz and bring in Agume. Maybe convert him to a CM. That would help. I think that's the best squad we can deliver here. Bench with Ebisha and Diaz. David Ashvili, unfortunately, to the bench because I want to get the best players onto the pitch. Jankovic goes to the left here. He's 18, 82 already. Berardi, 32, 83. Jovic is 82 rated. Quinones is his, of course, backup uh, player. Agume, Laku and Esugo. That's a bit of the worrisome part here, that midfield. But they are all still considerably young. So Laku and Agume are the oldest with 25. Esugo is 22. 19-year-old center back alongside Reyes, the captain. Zanotti is only 24, 80. And then Ekomie, 23, 78. With Kepa in goal, 32 already also. But he's a goalkeeper. He can play still for a couple of years. Switching up Sedomir Jankovic's position from a center forward to a right winger. And he goes up by one to an 83. Even better now. Furthermore, we have sold Marco Piaka, our pickup from season 1, to 20 for 6.1 million. De Amorim, I thought he could become a world beater, but he just didn't develop as fast as I would like to. 2.25 million to West Brom. Ignatenko to PSV, 5.3. I have changed Lucien Agumé's position to a central midfielder from a CDM and he stays at a 78. But he will go up. I mean, that's what I told you, boys. Eighth place again. Mid-table. We are once again absolutely mid-table. 14 draws. That is a whole world of draws. That is just too many draws. And once again, we get also knocked out in the round of 16 in the cup. I mean, that's the furthest we've made it so far in five seasons. Once again, Kin Younes is also the stats leader here with 13 goals. Big drop off though to Jovic, the second best scorer. That is just the stats are not good. I'm, I, I'm really sorry. I mean, players like Agume, Esugo grow at a decent rate, just like Zanotti. They are in their 80s. That's what I like to see. Ferreira as well, our new man here. I mean, in the first couple of seasons, we had risen like Phoenix, but since then, it's been mediocrity. 
I would have wanted to like a top six finish, but next season I want us, I absolutely need us to attack the European competitions. We just snatched the super talents away under the noses of PSG. Finally a good fullback once again. From England, 18 years of age, 83 overall. Our first signing of the season, Max Cooper. I bring in another CDM here, 29 years of age. It took me a long way, a long time to search for him. I've never even heard of this player, which is quite a uh, rarity. It's Oscar Doli from Liberia joining us here at Bordeaux. I, I'm always excited with these nations I don't even know anything about. Another player I've just signed, the third and final one. He's escaped Tottenham Hotspur because they approached him. He goes to us instead. It is the Italian camp, Daniel Maldini. Yes, the son of Paolo Maldini, the legend. He has those winner genes, I hope so at least. Besides signing those players, we've also sold Alex Moreno, who is now only 72 overall. We've still got 1.2 million, I don't know how. Tom Lacou, who was the starting player for us, he's gone to Marseille, our rivals, but oh well, 16 million. Evish has gone to Ajax, he's, uh, he's been a player with us for one or two seasons. Kelly wanted to leave the club, he's gone to Royal Antwerp for 14 million. We've of course our new players, Cooper here, at the left back spot, he's 18, 83. I have converted him to a left back, he was a right back, but yeah, he's a right footer, but I don't care. We have the best players on the pitch now. Dorley in that CDM spot here, 30, 81. A good midfield now, all in the 80s. Actually, every player in this old squad is in their 80s, so I want to see some improvements. Maldini on the bench, 26, 80, also still a lot of room to grow. And yeah, yeah season number run. six, and finally we can see some progress. Fourth spot in Liga, 61 points. The Coupe Nationale goes to Los Glil over Brest, what a name. We have once again made it in round of 16 and lost, as per usual, to Lille. I mean, finally we have two players in double digits, although Berardi has gone down again to a 79. He scored 13 goals, just like Jovic, who's come finally clutch. And the team is looking really, really good now. I mean, apart from Berardi, where we will need an improvement, probably put David Ashvili there for now. Season 6 is in the books and I am really relieved to see improvement here. Let's hope that next season we can make an even bigger step forward. Season 7 and finally, finally, we have found three world-class free agents. Abdul Majid Abbas, the, I do believe, Mohamed Salah region. He's Egyptian, a right winger. The second player we signed is a top-class real-life goalkeeper. From Ukraine, he plays for Benfica in real life. Only 27, 85 overall, it is Anatoly Trubin joining us here at Bordeaux. And the third and final player, a centre-back, 17 years of age. His name is Van Dijk, I mean, it's obvious, he's Dutch. Jordi Van Dijk joining us, probably the son of Virgil Van Dijk or something, the little brother. To clear out the club here, we have sold Marcelin to Olympique Marseille, Berardi to Celtic, so our best scorer from last season, he's gone, because of course we have now Abbas, the Mohamed Salah region. Diaz also 31 already, 14 million we still got for him from Celta. And then Kepa wanted to leave the club, he's gone to RB Leipzig. And so this is how the team is looking like for, of course, this 7th season with Bordeaux. The only problem I see with this team is that we don't have a real CDM slash CM to of course step in when Dorle and Sugo get injured or suspended. So that's the only thing. Seven is over and we have once again gone backwards. Even though we've only lost seven games, we are in fifth spot, so one spot below where we finished last season. PSG as per usual the champions. Strasbourg win the final of the Coupe Nationale over I think that is Valenciennes. What a final, strange, strange. We have actually made it to the semis, where we've just about lost to Strasbourg. That was an opportunity miss because there was no PSG in the semis. I mean, yeah, that's what I want to see for my striker. 21 goals for the first time in this rebuild. A striker or a player has scored more than 20 goals. 17 for Jankovic even, the winger. 13 for our backup striker, Quinones, down to an 82 now. Petro again with 10 goals. I mean, I'm happy to have kept him over, of course, Berardi. 
Abbas 7 goes for assist. There goes a little bit more for the Mohamed Salah region. I mean, apart from the most of the players being unhappy, I am really, really confident with those ratings. We didn't do too badly in the cup competitions this season. And thanks to players like Cooper 87, Reyes 87, Jovic, of course, our striker, who might go down in overall. Agume, Esugo, Dorle, not a bad midfield, but also there, Dorle is already 31. Season 7 is done and dusted. We have fallen off one place. Compared to last season, but yeah, in season number eight, I want to finally do that next step. So, guys, this season here, we haven't really found the greatest of players in the free agency list. I'm not gonna lie, but still, I'm gonna make a couple of signings. First of it is the former Manchester City player, Nico O'Reilly. He's 25, and the second, another real life player as well, coming into the club. A striker giving us options from the bench. Don Balat, he comes in. I have made yet another st signing here for the camp spot. Maybe we will change our formation a little bit next season. Because the former Tottenham player Jamie Donnelly is also joining us at Bordeaux here. But therefore, on the other hand, we have so Daniel Maldini wanted to leave the club. He's 28, 81, not a lot of upside to his rating. He goes to Napoli. Maybe improving squad depth was what we really needed. Only 25-81. We have, of course, also... Where is he? Here he is. O'Reilly, 25-79. So, good cam players now. Asugo Dorle, with, of course, the backup player, D Agume. We've, by the way, downgraded to the Europa Conference League, where we'll face Hearts, Hajduk Split, and Athens. So, we need to top that group, absolutely, and win the competition as well, in my opinion. At least reach, like, the semi-final. This is our best season by a country mile so far. Third place, we will play the Champions League qualifiers if I'm not mistaken. Paris once again the champions, these in second, we are in third. That's a good finish. And finally, we've also won something. The Cup, the Coupe Nationale over Rennes. Of course, we were not in the Champions League, it is Spurs winning that over Dortmund in the final. Spurs win the Champions League, how unrealistic is that? We weren't in the Europa League either, as, as Roma win that on penalties uh, over Braga. We were, though, in the Conference League in a quite easy group, where we topped it in flying colours, before going directly to the round of 16, destroying Ghent 4-1, beating Fiorentina, the, the Italian powerhouse, 3-2, just about, and then beating Bodo Glimd in the semis. What an opponent to face. To face Torino in the final. Can we make it two trophies in Season 7? Yes, oh my god, on penalties we've beaten Torino. I mean, those stats don't suggest that we have made a third place finish and won two trophies, two cups. Abbas with 12, Quinones with 12, Jovic with 10. Not too bad, those three, but then Vetro, Bala. I mean, I guess those stats are relatively well balanced. Reyes only down in about 12 here this time. Of course, of course this team deserves to play Champions League football. Next season, hopefully, we can find a better striker than, of course, Quinones and Jovic, who are now 33, respectively 34. Ballard is not really stepping up to fill their shoes. Season 7 is done and dusted. Third place in Liga, winner in the Coup, winner in the Conference League. That's a good season. And that's how you improve your sight with a first signing of the season. We have just gone in for a 20-year-old centre-back, 86 overall. An Englishman, followed up by the striker, we absolutely need it. I am so happy about this signing. It is a 20 year, it is a 28 year old, I'm sorry. Brazilian. It is, of course, Marcos Leonardo. I couldn't have asked for a better striker, to be honest. And finally, just to give us a little bit more depth in midfield, the former Real Madrid player, Renier, he was already approached by Arsenal, but we snatched him up the camp, 28 years of age. We have replaced Jovic with Marcos Leonardo. Hudson doesn't even start here. He's on the bench. First off, 20 years of age, 86, and he doesn't even start. That's crazy. And, of course, Rainier on the bench. He will chop and change with O'Reilly, with Donnelly also. Just to keep the squad young, I have Sir Julian Quinones. One of our first signings, as I can remember. It's been... Like a couple of days already that I recorded this first, but Kinyones goes to Nice for 17 million, he's 34. 
I also want to do something else when it comes to the tactical vision. And I do believe that wing play would be a great way for our team to express themselves. We can immediately test out the squad before the Champions League qualification matches. It who will be against Fenerbahce the first round. But this is the Super Cup, the French Super Cup, Trophée des Champions, against PSG. And we actually come out as winners. Zanotti and Marcos Leonardo upset PSG, who only get a goal back through Mbappé. Let's see how we go against Fenerbahce in the Champions League. This is where the serious stuff starts happening. At home, our first leg here. At the Madmude Atlantique, I think that's the stadium. Can we get an important win here against the Turks? Yes, it's a 1-0 though, just. Only just. Let's get through that second leg here, way at, of course, Fenerbahce Stadium. Can we confirm the second round? Yes, Donnelly scores. The playoff round or the final round of the, of the Champions League qualifiers against Ajax. Hopefully we can get another win here at home in the first leg. It is a 3-1 win this time. That's an important one. That's a good advantage as well. Can we now confirm our group stage spot at the Johan Cruyff Arena? 3-1 advantage and we lose 3-2 but we win 5-4 on aggregate. And in the Champions League group stages we have been stuffed up. Liverpool, Bayern Munich and Malmö. A very, very tough group. I mean, that's a Group G. Group of Death, rather. Stopping by at the halfway point of Season 8, just to tell you that we are quite far off again. Fifth place, 30 points. Four points just behind Nice, that is okay, but 12 points behind PSG. And in the Champions League, we've actually been grouped just about, though. Bayern Munich and Liverpool, as expected, progress. Malmö put up a fight as well. We are in third place and will go to the Europa League. The lane is done and we have mounted a title challenge. Only finishing in third, but still a very good season. 70 points. I would say our best season yet. In the Coupe Nationale, we have been knocked out to Lyon in the semi-finals. First, win back-to-back -back Champions Leagues. That's so unrealistic, but oh well. We have, of course, been in the preliminary round of the Europa League. After getting knocked out in the Champions League where we've crushed Slusk 5-1. Round of 16, we just about scraped past Arsenal 2-1, 7-6 on penalties. 3-2 against Chelsea, the English raid continues. Semi-finals, even then English opposition where we have absolutely just about beaten Newcastle on pens again. To face Bologna in the final, can we do it? Yes, back-to-back -back European titles. Our third in this rebuild with Bordeaux. I mean, Marcos Leonardo up to an 86. 25 goals. That's the man we needed up front. 16 for Don Lee even from Cam. 14 for Abbas. 10 for David Ashvili. 9 for Reynier. 5 again for Reyes. And the squad is looking very good as well. Esugo 85. Zanotti 84. Those are the lowest rated players in this start 11, I would say. Don Lee as well, 83. And Dorli, maybe we should replace him next season. Maybe we can do that with Agume right away. At the end of Season 8, it is a third place finish once again in the league. Group stages in the Champions League was abysmal. But semi-finalists, we couldn't uh, defend our title in the Coupe Nationale. What we could do though is win the Europa League. So back-to-back -back European titles is not bad. Maybe next season we can attack the Champions League. I have managed the one player that really elevates the quality in our midfield, our weakest part in the team, by signing arguably the Kevin De Bruyne region. He's 21, 86 overall. By the name of Felix Willems, joining us here at Bordeaux. That's a big upgrade. I mean, how did I even miss that? Rodri, a free agent, 36 he's already, but I don't care. He's 88 overall. Of course we're going to sign him up. And just like that, we have Rodri in our side, 36-88, alongside Willems. And those are the two only signings that I'm going to make, because this side, simply put, is outrageously good and should put up a fight in the Champions League. Of course, as the Europa League winners, we play our first game of the season, the UEFA Super Cup against Spurs. Can we get the first win here, the Champions League winners? Yes! We win against the Champions League winner Spurs. Still a bit of a weird thing to say. 3-1. Marcos Leonardo, Zanotti and the new man Willems in the second minute scored the goals. 
We have furthermore sold both Jovic for 20.4 million to Salzburg, as well as Oscar Dorli to PSG. He was approached by Barcelona as well, but I decided to sell him to PSG, because as the Europa League winners, we are automatically qualified for the Champions League, where we'll face an absolute group of death. I mean, group D is right. Borussia Dortmund, Roma, and Ajax. Now that's what I'm talking about. At the halfway point, at, on the 1st of January here, we are on 41 points after 17 games. 12 wins, 5 draws, 0 losses. We are currently on an invincible streak. We've even made it out of the group of death in 1st place on 13 points. Only 1 loss, 1 draw and 4 wins out of Dortmund, Roma and Ajax. Round the 16, we'll be facing Wolfsburg, so not the greatest, not the most impressive opponent, but still, we have to have respect ahead of this fixture. Our first showing in the knockout stages of the Champions League, here with the first game away from home to Wolfsburg, second in their group. We were first in our group, in our group of death, so we should be the favourites. Let's see if that materialises on the pitch. Not yet, it's a one-all draw. Willems and Greenwood, the goal scored us. Second leg at home, here we go at the Matmud Atlantic with our full strength, first 11. And we win 2-1 just about. Bayar, I mean, he replaced Marcos Leonardo, I forgot to say that. Because Leonardo was very tired, but otherwise Abbas gave us the winner in the 84th, the Mohamed Salah region. And of all teams we could face, it is going to be Fulham. Fulham in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Okay then, with a few tired players like Leonardo Cooper, I don't care, we will travel to Craven Cottage in hope of a good result, first leg, and we get that good result, it's only a 1-0 win though, but yeah, at least a win, it's Rodri with the winner. We are looking at a home game with a very tired Leonardo again, I don't care, as I want us, I want to see us go through here to the semis and we do that in... <laughs> In extra time, it was Abbas saving us once again in the 118th minute. He already scored the winner in the round of 16. He's going to be a hero, the hero of Bordeaux here. And oh boy, it will effectively be Spurs that we face in the semis. The other semi-final being Napoli-Chelsea, so that's going to be very tough. Here we are then, at the tail end of the season against the two-time champions in a row, Spurs. Can we upset them at our stadium, at the Madmut Atlantic? No, it's actually a draw. 0-0, zero, zero. nothing happened in that first leg. The second leg at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium is upon us against the Chronic Bottle Jobs who, for some reason, have won back-to-back -back Champions Leagues. However, we could make it into the first Champions League final of, of course, Bordeaux's history. Can we do that? The way to Spurs. Absolutely yes! Rodri, Abbas and Renier with the goals. Bueno and Viper score goals for Spurs, but they don't make it three times in a row into a final because we crush their dreams. Renier with the Before winner. Before I tell you who we'll face in the Champions League final, I can happily tell you that finally we have done it in Liga. One point only in the end, ahead of PSG. Three losses all season long. PSG only had two, but they had 12 draws. For once, the draws didn't kill us, but PSG. In the Coupe Nationale, it's not even PSG either, it's not us either, it's Lens over Toulouse. While we have been knocked out in the semis to Toulouse, the Europa League goes to Marseille over Roma, while the Conference League goes to Hoffenheim over Alkmaar. On the other hand, we will face Napoli in that Champions League final, in season number 9 here, on the 4th of June 2033. I mean, the stats look very balanced. Again, no player in their 20s, far from it, but Leonardo at least with 13 goals, 12 for Abbas, 12 for Vetro. I absolutely love the team we have built here at Bordeaux. A club that we've taken from scratch, from bankruptcy, and transformed them into maybe tonight the best team in Europe just by using free agents. And look what. The result is, look at those ratings, Zanotti the lowest rated player alongside Rodri. Enough of the talking as we go to the Estadio do Echel Benfica where Marcos Leonardo and Trubin have been home for a couple of seasons. But tonight it is the business against Napoli, against the Italian powerhouse.
So Marzic, the midfielder, trying to go forward here, bring it to McKenney. But he gets stopped by Willard. Of course, they have players like Ficha, Haratskelia and Osimhen still at the club. That is a great, great team. It's Devine now, the Englishman. Alfred Devine. Going forward, playing it into Ali. I don't know this guy, but here he is again. And it gets saved. First big chance of the game. Zamarzic now sees Devine and a lot of space for this man. It's uh, Alfie Devine now. Again, Osimhen and a great save again by Trubin. We have to get, we have to wake up here in that final. Free kick Napoli, it's uh, Kvara with a bad free kick inside. And Abbas could now go the other way. He's very fast. Much faster than this Baum guy who keeps up with him. But still Abbas. Abbas, but the second defender comes to the rescue. Now Weston McKenney, the American, into Ali, who had the biggest chance of the game so far, Ali. Of course, now he goes again here. Yeah, he's been a threat, but Cooper is there. Cooper, though, loses the ball. It's Osiman and it's Trubin again. It's another corner. Zamarzic brings it inside. Away, once again, but still. It's Baum into, I don't know, this guy, Vandenberg, and he scores the opener. I mean, we've been under the course and we can't really complain. We, they have been the better side by a country mile in that first half. We've been really struggling in that game here. Um, I mean, some players are really struggling. It's maybe because it's the tail end of the season. That was a great intervention. I don't know. But now, maybe now, Dario Esugo. Good ball for Leonardo. It's Marcos. Marcos Leonardo. Can he do some trickery? No. No problem for the Italian defense. Esugo plays it out for Abbas. Abbas with a good ball inside. Oh my God. What a chance, double chance. We are there now, there or thereabouts. Good play, again, it's Willems, the Belgian. Oh, great save by the goalkeeper of Napoli, Meret. Willems with a good intervention, now plays the ball into Leonardo. That's what we need, now we need help here, it's Abbas. Can Abbas play a good, oh, what a bad ball. For the last 10 minutes, we go all offensive. We have nothing to lose. So we bring on Balar and Davidashvili and Auda, Rodri and Djankovic. Careful though, first the free kick to Napoli. It's uh, Kvaracekilia. Brings it inside. We get it somehow away though. Uh, in just a matter of time. Now maybe Cooper for once. Their defense might be exposed. And Cooper, the left back, is so fast. He's good. He plays it into Balar. Balar. Still Balar. And it's a chance for Leonardo! At the depth. With the equalizer. I wouldn't have expected that anymore. But great play here. Great display. Good pass. And again. Putting two strikers up top works. Wonders here. Leonardo with a goal finish. The goalkeeper just stands there and watches. We can we, we get punished here right away. It's Mendes. 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 Good save. Trubin. Recovers that ball. Loses it Im immediately again though. And it's a chance. And Trubin with another save. Napoli have been all over us in that extra time. And now we could go on a counter. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. It's maybe yes, maybe now. Leonardo gets sent away. Leonardo with a chance. Good save, Meret. We get a corner. It's end-to-end uh, -end stuff here. Abbas with the corner. Can it be better than the first one? Yes, it is. It's a goal. It's Dombalar. The man we brought on. It's 2-1 to Bordeaux. I mean, that corner was the second, I think, of the game. It was much better. And yeah, just onto the foot of Bala, who put, had the time to control it and put it past Meret. 2-1 to Bordeaux. We just go a lot more of defensive now. Agume comes on for Marcos Leonardo. Abbas and Davidashvili go deeper. Willems goes into central midfield. And Bala is now the only one up top with 84 pace. Hopefully that's enough to... Get another counter started. As well as bringing on Van Dijk. I want to see what he's all about. For Hudson. 
Napoli will have to do very quickly now. They will have to create something before the end of the game. Maybe here already though. It is uh, Ali driving into our penalty box. Still Ali. Still Ali. Still Ali. And Trubin has been our saviour over and over again tonight. Now we can start the counter. It's Dombalar. Dombalar gets taken off the ball. Mendes looking for options. But we recover that ball that was an important recovery as now we could send away somebody maybe now it's uh, Bayar doesn't reach that ball however it should be over it's only one minute of any time ref oh my god will they have another chance here or won't they it's Ossiman come on Van Dijk against Ossiman as well but I think that's it that's no foul the game is done and dusted and Bordeaux after nine Cruel, grinding, long seasons have finally done it. We have completed the challenge. Not only won the French Liga, but also made Bordeaux the best club in Europe. But boys, if you enjoyed this grind with Bordeaux, and if you want to see other similar videos or different ones, then please consider dropping a like on the video subscribing to the channel and also telling me in, in the comments what else you'd like to see next for now i let you alone with the title celebrations as ismail reyes one of the first free agents we signed will lift that champions league it's been rebuild sombrero i'm out